I will introduce myself. Good, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Dan Billing. I'm your friendly farmer councillor based out on the east coast there. Come over to help the Western District counterparts today with a great day, Ag Innovation 2022. So I was sitting down the back in their last session, I was reflecting back on the, on the speakers that we've already heard this morning, and uh, there were some relevant, uh, you know, some pretty consistent uh, trends and themes and key points that all of the speakers actually talked about today. One of them was about embracing the opportunity. The other one was sitting there and understanding how do we create an open mindset. And the last one there was about being open to change. And if we think about that, in the context of us as producers in primary, primary industry, this is where the opportunity lies for us. It's about understanding how we can take those three key trends and themes and adapt it to a positive way for our businesses as opposed to it continually being a negative disruptor that we sit down there and we seem to think it's always doom and gloom. Now, today I'm going to introduce Marcus Beadle from Silver Fern Farms. His, his conversation and his talk is actually going to be pretty similar along those themes. It's around uh, you know, technology and innovation in the processing plants. And that's about creating, you know, it's about where are the efficiencies, where are the gains, where are the opportunities that he's seen it. So Marcus supports the operations of Silver Fern Farms for southern manufacturing sites with over 2,000 personnel in peak manufacturing at peak production and processing over 2 million lambs, calves, beef and venison per year. It's a role that looks to the future in one of the most exciting and challenging times in our industry. With more than 30 years of engineering and manufacturing experience in a number of sectors from oil and gas, wood products, aluminium smelting, automated materials, handling equipment, he brings a diverse experience to operations lean manufacturing, industry 4.0 and engineering. Marcus, the floor is yours, mate. Please, no way. Thanks, Dan. Super conscious that I'm the only person between you and lunch. <clears throat> we'll try and get through this uh, really quick. So, um, do a show of hands like earlier. Is any Silver Firm Farm suppliers there today? Or thank you. I think the rest of them are all down in, in Christchurch at the Farmers Conference down there at the moment. So, um, but. I just want to say thank you to all our pharma suppliers uh, this year. It's been an incredibly difficult year for us, uh, probably more so than the early stages of COVID. Um, it really has impacted uh, on our people and our, uh, and our sites operations and your patients. Um, it's been uh, really appreciated. It's uh, been incredible. <clears throat> what I'm going to talk today is about technology and innovation in processing plants. And if you're expecting... Uh, Terminator-style robots walking through the plants. I'm not going to show you uh, too many of those. I will show you some towards the end. But I'm going to focus more about um, the people. But firstly, just a quick introduction for those who don't know Soil Firm Farms and why we talk about the people a lot, is we have 14 processing sites dotted around the country. Um, I look after the Lower South Island area, so from Timaru South, and that's where um, um, most of our land processing occurs at the, at the plant at Finnegan. And, um, and Pariora, and then we do beef and, um, and venison as well down there. So around 2,000, if I can find them, 2,000 people down in the south. 6,000 people overall uh, in Silver Firm Farms and our operations. And as you know, um, we're pretty big, so $2.7 billion, $2 billion of revenue last year. It was a great year for us. But we can't just rest on our laurels there. We've got some, some really big challenges. And I, I love this because... I worked for Rio Tinto for many years in the aluminium business, including at the, the smelter down in Invercargill. And we lived and breathed and died on what we called the cost curve. And this is the beef cost curve from a couple of years ago from McKinsey Consultants. And what it shows <coughs> uh, going across is the, is the volume of exports in thousands of tonnes and the cost build up for each one of those delivered. And what always surprises me is India has a massive beef export business and can do it at an incredibly low cost. And we're right at the top, uh, next to Australia, an incredibly small volume compared to the rest of the world, and very high costs. And those high costs, the blacks, the farm costs, uh, blue, uh, trans dark blues uh, processing, uh, light blues transportation, and then the gray is the, the tariffs and taxes. 
And that's okay when uh, commodity prices are where they are at the moment, is way above the cost curve. But when that starts slipping down, what happens is the higher cost companies come off first and we don't have a lot of room. So we've got to constantly drive what we can control in operations, which is that blue, uh, dark blue area to continue to improve our cost of, of operations. And so we've got to look to do things differently. And with 6,000 people, you can imagine what the biggest cost input is into, into operations at Silver Firm Farms. And if you think if we were to add a dollar onto every hour of our people, that's a quarter of a million dollars a week of additional costs that go through that plant. So we've got to look at different ways. But we can't get them. In Clutha, at the moment, the unemployment rate's 2.8%. Um, in my region, I could do with probably another 500 people. And they're not there. They're just not in the region. 2.8% unemployment. Everyone's making choices about where they go. So, uh, so where are all the robots? Um, they're not there because I love people. Uh, they're hugely flexible. They learn. Um, we can respond to situations. I don't know how we would have operated under COVID with robots. It would have been impossible. We needed every single person to think, to act, um, and to participate in our operations. And we wouldn't have been able to do that without our people. Um, they can work incredibly collaboratively. Uh, they like playing with other people, robots less so at the moment. And the other thing is they've got a great sense of humor, and robots generally don't have a sense of humor. And in the last year of processing with COVID, it's one thing you definitely needed, and that was a sense of humor. So we, we really appreciate our people. We love them. We need to look after them. And so if we're going to innovate, we have to innovate with our people. So we have a bit of a pathway. as my pathway to innovation. Uh, lots of people, um, I don't know if there's anyone from Scott Automation in the room, um, they want you to start at the capital end. They want you to spend millions of dollars on machines. Uh, big, big results, but it takes a long time to do. I like to start at the other end, which is our people. And we have a program at Silver Firm Farms called Streamline. The Streamline is based on a continuous improvement program. It's come out of the automotive industry, lean manufacturing, or Toyota production system, or other names. And the great thing about Streamline, or those lean programs, is they can be applied in any manufacturing site, any non-manufacturing site. I've been involved with hospitals, farms, charity work. You can apply the thinking around waste elimination um, all of the time in whatever organization that you're involved with. And I'm just gonna show you the level of innovation that we're working with our teams. And the great thing about that is it's opportunity rich. And I'm just gonna play you a little video. I'm really hoping the sound's gonna work. So when we kicked off uh, Streamline, um, we had to really get 6,000 people engaged in small improvements every day. And I just wanna show you the level of innovation and how beautiful and simple the innovation is and the absolute results of this. So, Go with me. I'm hoping this Prior to Streamline, we had no consistent way of solving problems. During an accountability workshop, the leaders were challenged to identify and solve problems. Shireen and the team noticed cheeks were being dropped on the ground. And that was considered normal, just a part of how we do our job. The team was stacking them on a tray and carrying them across the floor. So we suggested using a trolley which turns out saved on average six cheeks a day from being dropped and also helped the team physically because they weren't twisting and carrying. A trolley, $19,000. It's a pretty good return on your investment for that. But that just shows you the things that we're seeing every day in our 14 operational sites that can be improved with very little innovation. You can see it's very simple, but it's just so beautiful and we're doing it all the time. The other thing that we're doing is we're engaging with all our people at the, at the shop floor, at the grassroots level. And they are coming up with amazing ideas that we're implementing day in, day out. What's the result? Over $10 million of saving every year with our people through this process of small, continuous improvements. So I ask my people, all I'm looking for is a cup of coffee per day of savings from each of our team members. The other great thing about this is that these people are having a part to play in their job that they're doing which means for them, it's a lot nicer place to work. Because when I first came to New Zealand 20 odd years ago, I was told, well Marcus, if you can't get a job anywhere else, you can always go to, to the freezing works at Lawnville. They take anyone. And, and I had that myth 
in my mind for many, many years until I actually joined Silver Fern Farms and what an incredible place it is to work with incredible people trying to make things better every day. So this, in my view, is true innovation, being able to get these 6,000 people participating in making Silver Fern Farms uh, a better place to work, more efficient, uh, more sustainable, more environmentally friendly, uh, more diverse, more engaging with Māori. It's, uh, it's a very different place or a different way of working from many years ago, I think, for the industry. Uh, we work much more collaboratively with the union. The union really engages with us around continuous improvement. And uh, in some ways, COVID has hugely helped us because it has been the burning platform for improvement. Um, I would say at the moment, our sites are more productive in terms of carcasses per person per hour than we ever have been for a very, very long time. And that's simply because so many people have been sick and been away, yet we've dropped our throughput. But we've managed to achieve incredible things over the last year um, despite that. So I'm very proud of our people, as you, hopefully you can tell. Um, but we are now moving into spending a bit of money. And uh, the great thing about making money is you can spend some money. And we are looking to automate many things in our operations. And I just want to take you on a wee bit of a journey. The first thing that we're really keen to do is innovate around our people and make our people uh, healthier and safer uh, and more productive in their workplace, um, rather than, again, in, in looking at necessarily more throughput. And I'm going to give you some examples here. I'm going to play this video. Hopefully it's going to work. I apologize for the noise. The rest of the noise is all going to be noisy machinery. Um, but this is a, a simple robot that's come out of Germany. Um, and this machine sharpens knives. So you go, wow, so what? Um, a sharp knife um, will significantly reduce the strains and injuries on people. The difference between a blunt knife and a sharp knife when processing uh, carcasses is huge in terms of kilograms every time they're stroking their knife. Um, and so having the sharpest knife you possibly can um, keeps people safe. That's number one. The second thing is you can take more meat off the bone and improve yield, which is good for everybody. Um, the quality is better, and we are installing all of these machines across our beef sites at the moment. Um, they're not cheap, um, and they require a lot of love, but they, they produce a perfect, perfectly sharp knife. So now we can focus uh, on our people around the technique and not necessarily the time that they're spending manually sharpening knives. The first ones have already been installed at our Taranaki plant, Hara, and uh, the rest will be out in the next, uh, next six months. We'll have them deployed across all our sites, all our beef sites. Okay. The other one is, is bound saws. I mean, if you've ever had the pleasure of going through a secondary room at, uh, at a meat processing plant, you'll see the big bound saws where they push the carcasses through to cut them off. And if you know many people who work in those secondary rooms, they might have a finger missing or a top of a finger missing. Um, it was almost like a rite of passage and something you expected to be when you're a bandsaw operator. Um, so again, at Silver Fern Farms, just show you, we've, we've partnered with uh, Guardian Can Do uh, for blade stop technology. Um, so these saws uh, have two levels of protection. The first thing they have is a bunch of cameras above the, the work area and they watch the blue glove. And if the blue glove goes within a certain area, the saw stops. But they also have a, a, a meshed glove underneath um, that's connected to a harness that's connected to the machine. And uh, if, the, if the glove was to just glance or get close to that blade, it will stop. I say it virtually eliminates because I'm never going to say it definitely will. Someone will find a way of doing it. Um, but we have all of those saws installed at every single site now at Silver Fern Farms. So I'm confident that no one from Silver Fern Farms will be going home with one less finger. Um, and it's been, it's been great, huge investment for us. Uh, there are other technology, uh, Skull Automation offer a, a solution as well, but we use Guardian, and we've had a lot of success with those. Um, it's great. This one's a bit of work in progress, exoskeletons, where you know people wrap eye around a big machine around them and wander around. Um, if you've seen Avatar, it's nothing like that. Um, I'm just gonna show you again, quick video. give you the level of manual handling. Those cartons are sometimes over 25 kgs, and they're moving a lot of those. And he's got, a, he's got an exoskeleton on there. I have to say, it's work in progress. I mean, it's exciting, but it's not quite there. And I, I think probably what we'll have to do is, is, is partner with, with someone to really innovate this product a little bit more or, or something similar. It's just not quite right for us. 
Um, it is really good in the automotive industry where you're doing a lot of working above your, your head, but where these guys are, uh, are uh, twisting, moving up, moving down, it's not, it's not a perfect solution, but we've been trying a, trialing a number of, uh, a number of uh, different designs uh, across the plants. Um, and we do, have, uh, we do have the opportunity to keep investing in and looking for solutions around that. So if you know someone who's, who's really into this sort of stuff, it'd be great to talk to. So um, progress anyway. But one of the things that we have at, uh, at, at Silver Fern Farms, we have this variation challenge. Um, and if you, if you look at our process, it's sort of divided up from animal assembly on the left-hand side there uh, through to primary butchery where we eviscerate and, and, and de-skin the carcass into secondary butchery where we're breaking down the carcass. Um, and then we keep going to the point where it's in a carton. <clears throat> Once it's in carton, it's pretty much uh, a product that doesn't have a lot of variation. But from the animal assembly, primary butchery, secondary butchery, there's a lot of, lot of variation in the, in the raw materials in the product, which makes it really, really challenging to automate, and hence why you don't see a lot of robots wandering around. As we get further down into, into the more uh, cartonized and, and processed products, you should never ever touch that, that product again. That should be just managed by, by automation. So, but there are huge amounts of opportunity all the way through. It takes a lot of money. I'm gonna show you a bunch that we're working on or have or are in the process of actually installing at the moment. I've tried to focus on the ones that are probably of interest to farmers, uh, so they're a bit more farmer-centric, um, but there is lots of stuff from virtual reality, on uh, training, there's, there's lots of things, but I, I've kind of focused on the, on the farmer stuff, which I hope you find really, really interesting. The first one, I'm sorry I don't have a video, is a fully automated uh, sheep washing uh, machines called Cleansian. So these are conveyor belts, and basically the, the sheep goes through and has a good shower all the way through. And it doesn't require any operators uh, to, to get these guys in a good shape. Uh, for most historic ways of doing it, it's either a great and we're spraying water from below, or spraying water from above. We have oscillating sprays. Um, these are a, 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 a travelator, so the sheep gets squished in, goes through, gets washed, comes out the other side. Um, <clears throat> we don't have any of those at the moment, but I'm actually in the process of installing two of these units um, in Pariora and Waitani in Gore. Um, so we'll be the first region to run these. Um, quite exciting. We are working with uh, MPI, hopefully through the Future Fibers Initiative to get some funding around that, but we're doing it anyway, because we can see some huge benefits around sustainability, significant water savings. Particularly my Timaru site has some very challenging resource consents around water extraction and wastewater discharge. Um, so there's big savings there, <clears throat> and it takes out a significant number of people. The animal assembly area where we're drafting the animals and moving them through ready for slaughter is incredibly labor intensive. So uh, this will take a significant amount of pressure off us. So very exciting. So within next two months, we'll have one running at Gore. And then not long after that, we'll have one in Timaru. And if you're down that way, you're more than welcome to come and have a look. Hopefully this one. This one's a bit like watching paint dry. I apologize. Um, this is primary butchery. So this is a 3D x-ray system where they uh, x-ray the carcasses and do automatic grading, um, which comes back to the farmers. So this machine here is going through, taking a, a 3D x-ray. Um, the great benefit for us is that we're consistent on our grading because we do rely on a large number of people to make assessments. Um, we can give the feedback directly to the farmer around uh, what the carcass looks like. Now we did this many years ago with, with sheep in the group way before my time. Um, and none of those machines are running anymore. In fact, we've pulled them all out. I think the technology was not so good. It was a 2D X-ray system. This is a 3D X-ray system. Um, we're looking to uh, partner with, uh, with a company to, to do some trials. Um, it's used a lot um, in Brazil for the beef, uh, beef side of uh, people like JBL, uh, JBS. So um, that's one we're looking at. That'd be quite exciting. Um, this one is the Veritite system. So it's a UV system that looks to find contamination on the carcasses. Um, obviously, we have some, some significant controls around food safety and food quality, and we use these machines to detect fecal and hair on the carcass after processing. Um, and this ensures that we meet our overseas market access requirements for our customers, gives really quick feedback to... Um, uh, to our operators on how they need to do their job better, 
Um, and the great thing is we find stuff before it gets to the customer because some of these hairs are incredibly difficult to find. And the UV system um, detection system is, is really neat. So it actually gives you feedback as soon as it detects. I don't understand the technology inside it. Uh, it's very expensive. We run those across, the, uh, across all the sites. We have two units. We're about to increase that to six units to cover all our beef sites uh, across the country. And then after we've done those, those smaller innovations, um, then there is the big options. And we do have these machines at our two big lamb sites. We have the first generation, what we call primal cutters. Uh, the ones that we currently have, the first generation ones, are very much like a car factory with automated robots. Uh, this is the Scott technology. Um, we partner with Scott um, quite a lot. Uh, we expect to be able to upgrade two units uh, ideally in 2023 at Takapau and uh, at Finnegan in, uh, in Balclutha. Um, they're not cheap, not cheap by a long way. These are multi-million dollar uh, capital projects. Um, they take a long time to install. We have to build extra buildings to house them. We need automation specialists. We need engineers that can maintain them. Um, these, are, these are major investments for, for people like us, but quite exciting. And then as we get further down into the coal chain area, um, you get what looks more like a car factory. And this is, uh, this is Dematic in Germany. And uh, they, they have a showroom of materials handling. It's an amazing place in Germany. And you can see when it's in a box, it's so easy to handle. It's incredible. You, you don't need sophisticated AI. It's doing the same thing every time. And we're working with our third party logistics company who are working with Dematic to see what the opportunities are across the, the whole cold chain area so that ideally no one touches a box and I don't need those exoskeletons. But again, you can see there's a lot of machinery. It's not cheap, uh, these investments. And then uh, recently um, in IFA in Germany, which is a, a big uh, materials handling and food um, convention in Germany, you are starting to see uh, collaborative robots. But I don't know. I'm not convinced at the moment. One day, they'll get there, but the speed, the ability for them to make good decisions, uh, when things change, when 50 people haven't turned up because they're sick, I'm not sure how that machine's going to respond. So that's why I'm so keen to invest in our people. And the last one, I think this is the last one. Uh, the pork industry is probably well ahead of uh, the red meat industry, uh, particularly elsewhere in the world, um, where they've got some real smart robots to remove the bones out of, out of the primals. Uh, and I think this is the future because finding good boners is really, really tricky uh, for us. And uh, well, I think we can learn a lot from, uh, from the pork industry. It's massive. Um, they've invested a lot in automation. So just going back to what we're trying to do, um, we are trying to innovate. It does, it's not sexy. It's not uh, uh, three-dimensional graphics of the America's Cup like uh, Ian was showing us earlier, but it's really cool stuff. But what I really love is the streamlined innovations that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with our people, making Silver Fern Farms a much better place to work than it was probably many years ago, and uh, just creating some incredible improvements around the site using the brains of 6,000 people. And that's us. Any questions? Thank you. questions. One, you can stand up and yell them out at me. Not the preferable one. Second one is you can use Slido. So when will Silver Firm Farms introduce a carbon neutral land product? I don't, I don't know. Soon. Uh, as you'll be aware, we're pretty, uh, pretty big into the beef at the moment. Uh, we've just launched our carbon neutral beef. Uh, and if you saw uh, Simon Lima, our CEO, in, uh, in, the, in the US, we're just into our dome, we were launching that. In terms of operational, uh, my area of the business, We've made a pledge to go carbon neutral at our sites for our, um, for our hot water. Um, right at the moment, we're installing um, some pretty large capital investments at the Pariora site in Timaru and the Finnegan site in Balclutha uh, for heat recovery and heat pumps that reduces our uh, reliance on coal uh, with the plan to eventually get to be coal free. Hopefully that answers the question. Ian. Yep. Uh, it's pretty traditional. Um, it's it's carbon as cardboard boxes. 
they go, they never come back. Um, there's a lot of work that the, um, the product innovation guys are doing around particularly the retail packs. So you'll see the burgers and the, and the other products are trying to get those more sustainable. But in terms of, you know, most of our business is 25 kg cartons. Um, we've done a lot of work with uh, Sealed Air and our other partners around the vacuum packing and that to make it more efficient. We've gone to uh, PVA free type packaging but we haven't kind of made that next leap into those really sustainable circular packaging solutions yet. Any other questions? Uh, do you want to just wait for that? Because a few people down the back might not be able to hear you. I'm, I know you said you're all about the people and stuff, and my family will work through quite a few of the plants. Great. Um, but all this kind of techie stuff, how much jobs is that going to be taken away from the people and stuff, you know, they've been there your whole lives and stuff? Oh, uh, look, um, like I always say, definitely, I can only talk for my region, but no one at Silver Farms needs to lose a job with this. I'm, like I said, I need 500 people. So what this does is it just takes the pressure off the people that are still there every day. Um, we've, uh, we've curtailed uh, small amounts of operations, particularly around the skins type of our business, lamb skins. It, it doesn't make a lot of money. Every single one of those people are redeployed. Um, we're, we're bringing in hundreds of overseas workers. So again, um, if I had a surplus of people, the Kiwis would be, would be getting the job. I need more people than, than you would believe. <laughs> For a long time, I think it's going to be like that, unless there's a sudden change in, in a economic situation or demographics. I'm always going to be looking for people. So one of the big threats or um, I see to your industry is that lack of people, and I would have thought that, that um, 3D imaging and automatic um, boning and all that sort of thing would have been number one priority to mitigate that. Yep. It is, but it's not quite, it's always not quite there. If you think, um, and I haven't shown you, if I was to show you, say, um, boning out 10 carcasses a minute on two lines, you need people going like this all day, and those machines are just not quite there yet, or they're 20, 50 million dollar investments, and it just takes 12 to 24 months to get those going. The primal robots that you saw at the end, which is probably one of the biggest productivity savings we've got, is four years in the making. Yeah, but absolutely right, it's, it's gonna be the future but it takes a lot of time, money, and, and, and we're curtailed by building materials to actually build, them, build the buildings to put those in, get them the jib. Um, finding the engineers to design it, finding the automation engineers and the electricians to plumb all these things up. It's, it's really, really tough at the moment to get these things off the ground. We've got such an aggressive capital plan at the moment that I don't think Silver Firm Farms operations have seen probably since they built a plant last. You know, Tayaraho would be the last plant they probably built. Um, we, we've got such a big project, but we're just constrained on our ability to find good engineers to do that work. But you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's the future. Yes. Well, that looks like it's... Uh, it's lunch. You've, you've answered everyone's <laughs> questions here, Marcus. So, uh, Thank you. Mate, thanks very much, Marcus. Thanks, Dan. That was a great, uh, it was a great insight into sort of where you, you think your focus is for Silk Firm Farms. And if I put that back into perspective of our own businesses, uh, you know, our own farming businesses and us as primary producers, it's, you know, based on what you're saying there, it's about the small things that add up. You know, the small things that lead to greater savings when you accumulate them all. And I think that's the lesson here is in today is focus on those, don't lose sight of those because Absolutely. that is where the opportunity lies for us. That's where you guys as, a, as you know, farmers can capture the opportunity, the small things. But uh, don't go anywhere. I've got a... Thanks very much, Marcus. Thank you. That was a Thanks, good Dan. Session. Appreciate that. Thanks, guys.